So I had this idea to build my own tables for this living room workshop area I have, but something came up and I got these two tables for free. That's heavier than I thought. <sighs> Dear God, I am so out of shape. But there's still some minor problems with these tables, so I'm gonna slightly modify them to work for what I need. Here's what's gonna happen. First, I'm gonna add in some new tabletops on these. They're gonna be a little bit larger than what's here currently to give me more surface area. Secondly, I'm gonna add in some storage underneath just for some miscellaneous supplies. But for right now, I'm just gonna be focusing on the tabletops because these are an entire project in themselves. The existing tops of these aren't bad, but I just want to make something more unique to me and to design and make something that's my own. So let's get building and I will explain how all of this will work. I'm going to make these tabletops a little bit larger to have a couple extra inches on all of their sides. The idea for this new top is to essentially make it like a hat that it can just slip right over top of the old one. I can both use less material and cheaper material like MDF and just make that the base structure and then cover that with veneer afterwards and make this whole thing like a marquetry inlay project. Since I have two tables, I thought that it would be cool if the veneer inlay kind of just made one big picture between these two when they're sat next to each other like this. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I will throw up a mock-up render on screen for whatever future me decides that will look like. But I will get more into the specifics on that in just a minute. First though, we need to build the base structure. I am using one half inch MDF so I can just layer it up to create the thickness that I need. For all of these cuts, I had to use my parents' old wood shop since my small living space doesn't have room for large woodworking machines. I cut strips from scrap pieces of MDF to make the edge profiles that I need and they were just a hair short of what I actually needed so there's this slightly weird gap in them when it's all put together but I'm trying to be efficient with how I use scrap material so it won't really matter in the end since this will all be hidden anyways. I started to glue up all of these side profiles together and then took them over to my special drawing room which also doubles as my kitchen floor. Now once all of the edge pieces were glued together for both the small table and the large one I needed to clean up the sides a little bit since there was some spill out from the glue on either of the sides, but these rough old chisels that I have made very quick and satisfying work out of that. I went on to repeat that process for all of the edges so that they have a nice clean surface for the veneer to adhere to. Now that the edge profiles are done, I can glue them to their new MDF top and join all of this together so that the foundation of all of this is done and I can just get started working on the veneer portion but during a quick test fit, I ran into my first big hiccup. So I'm not really sure what I did, but I measured this small table completely wrong. It's off by more than like an inch. So this is just a lesson why you don't measure stuff late at night when you're tired. So I can fix this now by cutting out some material on the inside and it will look a little goofy, but you never really see that part. So it doesn't matter too much. So the new tabletop structure is done and it fits now. So they just slip right over top of the existing ones I have here, but we have our blank canvas done, so let's just make some art. While I am planning out the rest of this, I'm going to get the veneer preps to be cut. I want this as flat as possible, so I'm going to cut it down to the size that I need, and then I'm going to wet it all down and then clamp it together to hopefully get them as flat as possible, changing out the paper towels every 12 hours or so. Now, even though it only added a couple inches on each side, this will help fit my 3D printer and my laser cutter a lot better on these. On a quick side note, if you're thinking to yourself, he's gonna make these beautiful tables and then just cover them with machines. Yeah, pretty much. But these are just meant to serve a temporary purpose until I can get around to actually building my own tables. So then afterwards, I can just take these off. I still have the original tables underneath and these can be repurposed as wall art. So let's get started on the veneer now. I have a Glowforge laser cutter so I can make this veneer inlay pretty complicated. So far, I have been really impressed with the machine and just how easy it is to use and set up. This has been just one of my favorite purchases so far, and it really opens up a lot of opportunities for me to make anything I want. And I'm excited to use it for this project, and I have even more future plans for it, so you're gonna see this machine often. If you're thinking of buying one, there is a referral code in the description where you can get up to $500 off one, so check that out through the link down below. Now with being able to precision cut the veneer, we can make stuff that would normally be just a massive headache to make. Here's what I got so far. I bought two different veneer types. I have white oak and walnut. If you can't tell yet, I like that combo in wood. I decided that I want to make a mountainscape out of these two tables, so I used SketchUp to just get a rough pattern and then I diced up the mountains into smaller portions which will be used to make up the mountains. I want to be constantly changing the orientation of the wood grain throughout them to really emphasize the geometry of the landscape. 
I want to remake the mountains since the first iteration of these, I think they'd be a lot better, but first I want to settle on a design for the sky. Here's what I tried. A version with a radial design, maybe something with stripes, other patterns like a herringbone, simple diagonals, maybe something fractal like the mountains are. And then I got it. In the existing tables, they have these very heavy metal legs that have this gentle curve to them and wrap around onto themselves so I can make the sky have a similar language to that and make it like Starry Night-esque to make the tabletop have elements similar to the legs and to just tie this whole thing together so it looks like it belongs. Now, I love this, but the only problem is that the pieces are a little too big since these tables are so large. I can split them up to cut and then just rejoin those multiple pieces back together. Now that I had the sky all planned out, I reworked the mountains a bit to make them look a little bit better and more natural. I then planned out how I want the grain to run on each of these pieces and then took that whole thing into Photoshop to get a rough idea of what this will all look like in the end. I decided that two tones are a little plain, but I'm not trying to introduce another color into this, so I picked up some stain that I can use for essentially shading to give this more depth. Now for the laser cut file, there is actually one very minor but critical part to all of this. I have all of this stuff laid out now. I crammed all of these individual pieces onto the veneer templates to match with the grain orientation I want, but we need to slightly alter all of these parts to account for the actual laser. Similar to using a table saw or a bandsaw, you will lose some material when you're cutting it. That's the blade thickness of material removed. Now for this project, it's the laser vaporizing the material to cut. We need to counteract that by making the pieces slightly larger on all of their sides to make up for that 1 64th of an inch that is lost. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but when there is over 100 pieces that all need to come together, that can add up and compound that minuscule error very quickly to become a problem if not actually addressed. Now that that's set up, we can start laser cutting everything. So I'm cutting out all of these sky pieces right now. I'm about 90% done, but I'm noticing two problems to this. Number one, I should have labeled these somehow. This is a complete mess. But the bigger problem is for these sides. I originally thought that I was going to cover them with veneer and just completely forgot about that, like entirely. So I didn't plan out for any of that. And now I'm out of veneer. Don't really want to go buy more. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else for the sides, but that's gonna be a problem for future me to figure out because I have a puzzle to put together now. Hey, so it's future me, and I did absolutely nothing to solve that problem, but I think that the easiest solution to all of that is just going to be to add an extra quarter inch of material around all of the sides, kind of just like a frame for this thing. Now, all of the pieces actually went together really smoothly. There was kind of only one part that actually gave me some trouble, but that was probably user error. Everything is taped together now, so I think I'm just going to glue all the veneer down. So I just finished gluing everything down, and it did not really go quite to plan. I'm not actually even entirely sure I can say that because that would have required me to have a plan to begin with, but you'll see shortly that I did not have one. And the good news is though, if you're actually seeing this, then that means that everything worked out fine. And if you're not seeing this, then that means that all of these sinful woodworking things I've done here today will just go to the grave with me. Let me show you what I'm working with. So this is the aftermath of my large glue up without any of the proper tools. Normally you would want something like a vacuum press for this, but instead I have six clamps and two brain cells. I thought that I could just clamp down on a scrap piece of wood to help distribute the pressure down to an acrylic sheet that runs along the entire top of the table. Please take note of my carefully thought out random tape edges and cardboard shins. You also may have overlooked the very subtle, massive side table I grabbed in just a fit of panic to help try and weigh this thing down more. This will be one of those things that's really funny to look back on if it actually works, but 
extremely depressing if it ruins all of my work up to this point. So I'll find out tomorrow. Well, by some miracle, this dumpster fire went pretty well. Now, there are still some minor problems with that. Some of the pieces on the edges started to curl up a little bit since I couldn't get, you know, full clamping pressure on all of that. So I've just been going through and kind of spot regluing that as necessary, but I'm gonna finish with that, get it all cleaned up and then start sanding. I mean, that worked, but that was a terrible idea and I'm never doing that again. I mean, until like five minutes from now when I do it again, cause I still need to glue the small table, but after that, never doing it again. For sanding, I jumped straight to 180 grit for this since the veneer is pretty delicate and thin and I didn't want to go too heavy and just sand right through it, which I still did in some places. In this step, I also did my best to mask the pieces that joined together to make one shape on the sky. This really only consisted of mixing up some glue and sawdust to try and make that joint a little bit less noticeable. And those are the only seams that I'm actually really trying to hide on this project. I'm not trying to hide the fact that this is a laser cut project. In fact, I like that. And it's kind of weird to say, but the Glowforge actually cut a little too clean. When I did my original render, kind of subconsciously, I just put in these scorch marks around all of the pieces. And in reality, that's not there. But I actually kind of really liked the look of that. So I came back through with a wood burning kit to put emphasis on the sky joints, which also would help mask the other minor joints by making these ones more pronounced. At this stage, I also ripped down some 1 8 inch birch sheets into the frame pieces to hide the sides of all of these tables. After they were then cut to size, I went ahead and used some forbidden ancient staining techniques to color them with the same stain that I'm going to use for the shading on the tabletops. After I put all of the edge pieces on, I next jumped into the staining of the mountains to match. And it's at this point, I feel like I should mention, I don't use wood stain often, pretty much ever, let alone like a gradient. So a lot of this was guess and check work to try and get it close. And yes, I'm staining walnut, which I'm sure will get a lot of people riled up, but it's my general belief that nothing's sacred and I had a specific vision for this in mind, which required stain. I went with the heaviest parts first and tried to go lighter from there. I also made this really weird error of using this horrible cotton rag with a lot of texture to it before switching to a smooth one, which was so much better. I even had done smaller tests before this to just see the stain colors and those turned out horrible. So why I jumped straight into the final project after that, I'm not sure either. I worked on the stain for about two hours trying to get all of the gradients smooth and some places worked better than others. With not using stain often, I forgot how unforgiving it was, but when it was all done and I could take a step back, I was pretty happy with where it all ended up. Once all of the staining was officially done, I put the tarps back down and I just finished it off with some polyurethane. Now, this is water-based poly and I'm using that for two reasons. First, I'm working inside and even though it is a well-ventilated space, oil-based poly just still smells so terrible and I didn't want that smell all over the place. Secondly, water-based poly preserves the natural wood color more than oil-based finishes since that tends to yellow out the wood and I didn't want that on this project. I wanted to keep the sky light. And although water-based poly is not as good at protecting a piece like oil-based finishes are, I just put on multiple coats, sanding at 220 between each of them to help build up a protective smooth finish. And with that, we can call the first part of this project done. 